Hello, listeners, and welcome. Twelve Sided Stories presents Otherworld London, an actual play RPG podcast that uses the seventh edition Call of Cthulhu system. We weave macabre, gaslight era tales of terror and suspense for your listening enjoyment. Our games are story driven and rules light. Now, our keeper for Otherworld London, Wes Otis. So before we do jump into it, I want to talk really quick about Patreon. Join us. Your support will help us get to the point where we can do things like weekly shows. As you know, a lot of production goes into this. We we do a lot of editing and a lot of different things. And that's it. So without further ado, let's jump right into it with Terry. Oh, yes. Much to do about something. Um, Hi, I'm Terry Gamble. I play Alizé Carew, shopkeeper, former werewolf lady, and lady about town. (laughs) (laughs) Just strolling about town. Mm -hmm. Not in wolf form anymore. (laughs) Hi, everyone. Kelsey Osborne, and I will be playing Maggie Cooper. Um, I don't even, I don't think we can really call Maggie a sex worker anymore because her establishment was burned to the ground yeah but you know she's figuring it out she's between careers yeah she's she's in between jobs perhaps yeah perhaps having a little career transition (laughs) (laughs) you know after this whole like demonic (laughs) other world tree business and you know you were a craggy killer for a little bit but that ran out (laughs) yeah so now you gotta move to something else that only lasts so long fucking gig economy i swear to god you don't know no reliability (laughs) no stability stability. (laughs) ridiculous I'll wait. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, I'm Mac Beauvais. I'm playing Ethel Prendergast, who, uh, boy, things are just not going her way lately. Plus, her dad showed back up and gross. I don't like it. (laughs) Hi, I'm Michelle Otis, and I play Eugenia Penbottom of the Lancashire Penbottoms. And uh, her occupation is still currently wife. However, she has taken up a side gig as... uh, spiritualist (laughs) (laughs) so last time we got together you guys went out to the tree to try to find out what's going on you know the new one that popped up and this huge bird-like raptor triceratops whatever creature oh my goodness uh came after you guys did Just, not like yes and you guys had to take the tube and the whole thing and it escape. was a dreadful experience it was dreadful um, and, the, and the pterodactyl was awful as well <laughs> pterodactyl i know i went through all the dinosaurs <laughs> name except for that one uh and when you guys got back to eugenia's place ethel sees her father and Mabel and Scotland Yard sitting on the porch talking with the general. So Ethel, Maggie, and Alizé basically stayed in the coach. Eugenia got out and you guys just went. And that's basically where we're at. You guys did a lot of... Was there anything else from the last episode? I can't think of. I think Alizé it was... gave Ethel an amulet. Oh, a yeah. Amulet yeah. That from the shocks. Works, mm-hmm. uh, works well enough and to And that got rid of Craggy's, Craggy's ghost. Yep. And uh, Ethel gave Alizé the book to hold on to. Yes. Mm-hmm. yes. Okay. For safekeeping. Okay, cool. So I think that was the the long and short of it. So that's where we're going to pick up. We're picking up with uh, Ethel, Maggie, and Alizé in the coach. You guys have just left Eugenia back at her place. Where do you tell this coach? I mean, there's so much going on. You're in, you know, like, which fire do you want to try to put out first? Should we just drive around until we see that... They've left and then regroup with Eugenia. That may arouse some suspicion. So we need to find a place that's safe. We're running out of places. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not certain on returning to my home. No, I don't think it would be safe, quite honestly. I'm not sure if my shop is being surveilled as well. I am suspicious at this point in time. 
Would Maggie know of like a, I don't know, like a hole in the wall bar oh, absolutely. place or something that like doesn't usually get patrolled or something where yeah. people don't ask questions? It's where things, yeah, you don't ask any questions kind of a place. Yeah, yeah. yeah you do. Um, could we, do, should we go there then to... That sounds like a perfect idea, Maggie. <laughs> Miss Cooper, yes. <laughs> the flute yeah. and whistle. <laughs> the squeaky flutes. The squeaky flutes. <laughs> Anywhere but the ten bells. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh Lord, was the ten bells? It was one Jack of the. the it was Ripper. one of the pubs that Jack the Ripper picked up a lot of his victims at. Now we're going to have to change the name of our pub. <laughs> No, it's still there. I, was, I went on of course the Jack, it is. Everything's still there. I went on the Jack there. the Ripper walking tour, and uh, it is still there. Um, well, if we're looking for somewhere that, that people don't usually look for people, um, there is a pub we could go to. Um, it's called the, the Squeaky Flute. Oh, sounds like a it's plan. It's kind of near the East End. Is that all right? Uh... If do we, not believe we have a lot of options at this point. If we don't want to be noticed, I think it's our best bet. We are running out of places of prominence. Let's do it. Let's tell the coachman. And I am concerned I may have to find alternate lodging for a while. Yes, you may. They do have rooms. Well. <laughs> we could all share for safety, you know. Safety in numbers, as they say. Correct. Mabel can, is not gonna stop coming after me. I do believe that. We should send a message to Eugenia so she knows where we, we are. So that's where you guys are gonna head. Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. Squeaky um, flute. Eugenia. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, the name the squeaky flute. <laughs> she loves it so much. Just Can't you just hear up. the squeaky yes, flute? Yes, I can. That's why I'm laughing. <laughs> <laughs> it's me when I tried to learn how to play the flute. The, you know, the general comes down and you two talk for a little bit. When are you are you going to broach this subject ever with him, or what? What's your what's your thought on this? Well, I know she's been waiting for a good time to, you know, we've been a little busy with, with yeah trees growing up in the middle of London. So, are you going to tell him, or are you going to keep waiting? I think mm-hmm. that I'm going to talk to an old friend. My old friend, Philippa. Uh, you leave the general at home and you go over to Philippa's house. Come in, please. Come in, please. It's so good to see you. Oh, Philippa, so lovely to see you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know she would normally offer tea. Oh, yes, tea. I'm sorry. Do you want tea? Oh, of course, of course. The older I get, the things I start forgetting. She <laughs> tells someone to get you tea. Well, my darling, while well, it's lovely to see you, um, this isn't just a social call. It is partially a social call, but it's also, well, I'm in need of advice. Well, what can I help you with? You do remember when when Robert and I were first engaged? Yes. And I had been courted by Lord McNevin. Oh, yes, I remember Lord McNevin. Well, Lord McDevin has gotten in contact with me recently. Whatever for? Sadly, his family has been, well, just tragically, they died. Oh. Including his sons. What does that have to do with you? Well, he seems to think that because of a certain indiscretion of which you know about... Mm -hmm. That my eldest might actually be his and not Robert's. Oh, dear Lord. And he wants someone to leave his estate to. That's just shocking. What are you... So he wants you to tell your husband that your oldest is his? That's... I don't know, Eugenia. That's... That's dangerous territory. I know, and it's it's quite difficult because, you see, Robert and I have, well, we've had to um, become a little more frugal. What do you mean? Well, apparently the bank accounts are not exactly 
as they once were. And our son has put us upon a plan of not spending so much money. In in other words, my darling, we're we're not as rich as we were. Oh no. I, I know. That's terrible. It's shocking. And so his offer comes at Is there anything at this I time, can do? Well I just I just need it, some advice. Honestly, dear, that all happened so long ago, and and if you were to bring it up now, you know, the general's a proud man. I, I think that he would, um, I think that you would, you would lose him. And though M- Lord McNevin is a, you know, a, a, from what I remember, a good man, I don't know if I would throw away everything. I would... I would say... Uh, tell him that Robert is definitely the father. I think I agree with you, Philippa, and I... I'm so grateful for your counsel. So are you... You're all right, though. I mean, with your money, you'll, you'll be okay. Well, I mean, we're making do. We, we're, we're down to only a handful of servants. What? How do you dress Robert? I've had to button his shirts. It's terrible. I know, it's so improper. Let me help. I'll, I'll send over a footman and... Well, we won't have to tell your son about it for a little one until you're back on your feet. Oh, I couldn't. No, Philippa. no. I think it's for the best. We'll we'll help you out. Oh, you are so sweet. Well, we just want to make sure that you guys are safe and okay. Thank you so much. And I hug her. <laughs> okay. And you head back to the house mm-hmm. afterwards. Okay. Demure West is my favorite West. <laughs> oh my! What do you have to say? <laughs> austerity. I know. Oh, I the almost, austerity, the audacity of the, the audacity. austerity. I almost used the term austerity, and I said, mm-hmm. "No, I just can't." <laughs> so, oh, <great. laughs> you guys make it to the squeaky flute. It is as Maggie had explained. Uh, <laughs> CD is all CD gets they mainly serve gin because it's cheap and there is not a lot of light it's actually in a basement it's underneath a like textile you know mill or something above it they dug out a hole and threw a bar down there some weird password that maggie right somehow right chicken dickens (laughs) (laughs) shh don't say the password um, so, on the street like that. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys get down there and you feel a little unease because you're three women in a very seedy bar, except for Maggie probably. <laughs> but Alizé and uh, Ethel, you probably haven't been in an establishment like this before that's like super you know um, no, so, but Ethel's going to walk in with the confidence of somebody who has been. Right, yeah. That's what I figured. Ethel, is there anything that you've read in your book here uh, that might help us with this tree or the children or anything? Roll against your cult. Ooh, 21 underneath my 70. Excellent, cool. Make sure you put a check next to it. Now, if you guys remember, I did tell you that there was a way to basically send Sir Nunos back. It was like a banishment spell that Mm -hmm. you would all have to be involved Mm -hmm. in. Yep. In order to do that, you have to get your power back from Mabel. Now, you do find that there seems to be things that his worshippers and followers from the church have trouble with like iron and and certain other like herbs and things like that so that's that's part of it also only Sir Nunos is immortal so the satyr 
and these other creatures are not like the um this keep it in what <laughs> so setting them on fire would work yeah actually <laughs> A lot As of, does with 90% of monsters and things. Yeah. The only thing you can't set fire ghosts. Let's set everything else on fire. Yeah, all those zombies bad, burning zombies worse. That's, yeah, you know, Yeah, they run after they you. Run Again, after you 90% you. of ghosts and things. There are a certain few Just that not are not. Zombies, right. You, know. you find out that. So you guys know of the ritual. The biggest problem you have right now is you don't have your power because she seems to be siphoning it off from you somehow. And still continuing to do so. Yeah. Give me another occult roll to think about the things that Alice told you. That was like an 80 something. Yeah, that was an 86. So yeah, you think that maybe she is using your power for something for some really big spell in this warehouse, but um, you're not sure what that what it is like you don't have enough information and that's still the warehouse where alizé and ethel retrieved the book where everybody was like yeah. levitating and yeah cut. yeah everyone was levitating um four feet off the ground ray <laughs> anyway <laughs> um, um, so question then does the amulet that ethel's wearing since it blocks out spirits does it have any effect? Does it seem to have an effect on like how strong she's feeling magically? It, it zaps all of her power. Oh, you have so no power without it. It's even it's like With the it. opposite of like it's not protecting her from yeah. Mabel's spell. It's just it's suppressing protecting in everything. All. She okay. is she is a muggle right now. But it actually may be helping to keep her shielded from it Mabel. Is. Oh yeah, no, yeah, that she was can't she use can't it. use okay. it. But um, and that's why she showed up. At your house so quickly. She was like, what the hell is that? Yeah, like, wait a minute. My GPS went off. Yeah. (laughs) Where the the fuck is it? (laughs) Somebody touch the thing. (laughs) It's her EPS, her Ethel positioning system. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. (laughs) So, ladies, it, it seems like we can't really do anything until Ethel gets some of her power back, right? I'm honestly feeling quite drained ever since using this amulet. I'm sorry. It does block everything out, so anything going in or out is unable. It's probably why uh, Mabel was so upset. She's unable to draw anything from me. Does explain a lot. I do have one idea, but I don't know if it's if it's safe. I can assure you, none of the ideas we're going to have are safe. I guess that's true. Um, well, do you remember a while back, you know, but before everything happened with the rose petal and all of that, I talked to one of Mabel's house servants, Tommy. Oh, yes, Tommy. Well, what if Tommy could help us find something about Mabel that that might give us some leverage or or help us get... I don't know. Some kind of information. Anything would be helpful at this time. We do need to get rid of her somehow or stop her from pulling all your energy so we can use it for good. So we can get rid of this terribleness that's fallen upon our city. I would like that very much. I am concerned about going anywhere myself just because I am a liability. I don't think either of you should leave, to be honest. This is the best place for you to be with no eyes really looking at you, if you know what I mean. Right at that second, you look out and every man at the bar is looking over at you. Well, I mean, aside from those kinds of eyes. (laughs) I think we can fend them off quite frankly. Look, I'm going to go ask the uh, innkeep for a room. And um, in the meantime, why don't I talk to one of the street urchins and see if they can maybe bring Tommy here? That would be wise, yes. So, right when you guys finish your conversation, one of the doors from upstairs from where the girls do their work opens up and stumbles out with uh, two ladies of the evening is Robert Jr. And he walks down the stairs he doesn't see that you're there until he gets down the stairs. Then he turns and looks at all three of you. 
and he freezes for a second, and then he pulls down his hat and shoots out the door. Robert! Robert! Shuts the door Robert, shut. Robert, wait, Ro- no, Al- Alizé, Alizé, we can't let on that we know him. There's a certain amount of discretion in an environment such as this. I am so sorry. <laughs> I can't believe we just saw him here, though. I mean, he did look like he had, had, had a, a good, good time. time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Oh, Robert Jr. Oh, oh, I wonder what Eugenia's going to think. We have to tell her. No. I am not sure we need to inform her of this. <laughs> At some point, I'm not going to be able to keep it in. This is wild. Oh, it's so wild. <laughs> How many servants of prostitutes have you been buying? <laughs> no he's wonder asked, we have no money. Yeah, he's asked her to be discreet with money, and here he is. It is quite scandalous when you put it that way. Yes. Although, if I'm being honest, I can't imagine that this establishment's uh, workers charge an entire lot. Probably not a lot. Depends on how often he's here. Exactly. There's that. Oh, I wonder. We might need to do a little bit of investigation. (laughs) (laughs) I know I shouldn't sound this excited, but this is crazy. (laughs) Do I know either of the girls? I love the twinkle in Terry's eye right now. (laughs) Um, Yeah, yeah. I love a scandal. Casually. Yeah, yeah. Uh, What's what's one of their names? Um, Delilah. Delilah. That's That's a good one. That's great. Delilah. Oh my god, that's Delilah. I know, one of the girls he just walked out with. You should go talk with her and find out how often he's here. And find out if he's a good customer. You mean like if he does a good job? No. (laughs) (laughs) That would not be the question I was seeking an answer to. Oh, you mean like if he's courteous or like if he's a good If he's a gentleman and how much he's paying to be here. Sure, yeah. And how often if he's a regular Mm -hmm. customer. Mm -hmm. Well, Delilah and I get on quite well, so I'm sure I can pull her aside later. As much as I enjoy gossip as anyone else, uh, there is... More important things at hand. You're ruining all the fun. I do understand. I apologize. I do seem to have that way about me, especially when I'm seeing the ghosts of Craggy and having all of my energy siphoned off by a crazy woman. I am sorry for my (laughs) insensitivity right now. I got very distracted. I'm so sorry. It's just everything else seems overwhelming and insurmountable, and this one tiny piece of information seems like it might unlock some... Things. Well, with some luck, Delilah will survive the tree incident and will be able to give you all of the juicy information you I are seeking. I appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> oh. All right, you two sit tight. I'm going to go get a key. All right, so you go to the barkeep, and uh, yeah, he, he get, gives you a room and everything. Are uh, you going to be working? I might. I just was wondering that it cuts 20%. Well... I'll just pay full rate in case I don't get around to it. All right, all right. <laughs> you know, well, it's, it's going to... We have many no, important things to do. I understand. I wasn't, like, being yeah. incredulous about it. I Now I look on my face was like, what? But I was still like, what? <laughs> and then I was like, what? And She's like, uh, yeah. <laughs> Could make some extra dollar. Eh, well, it's fine. I, no. I'm hoping she doesn't do it while we're there. That's <laughs> all I'm thinking. <laughs> well, I'm just going mean, to sit in the corner and read my book. I could mm-hmm. teach you a little bit of something for when it's time with Benny. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Goodness. No. Right, Could you well. imagine being poor Benny? <laughs> I mean, she's been with Sir Nunos, the antler I know, god. Right? <laughs> it's going to be fine. We're going to do it missionary style, and it's yeah. going to be perfect it's every gonna, time. Every You're going to look at the ceiling it'll and be, think of England. It'll be yeah. perfectly proper <laughs> every, <laughs> time. every time. You're going to be Mary Poppins' of sex. <laughs> <laughs> oh. My clothes will be on perfectly, perfectly properly. <laughs> A spoon, oh God! A spoonful of sugar will make this all so go away. <laughs> you don't even... want to know what the spoonful of sugar helps go down. Oh. <laughs> 
I had not considered <laughs> what my sexual life would be like with Benny. Right. Letting a hundred percent less handlers. Mm. Correct. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And stars. Because remember, he was made of stars. Okay, okay. okay. <laughs> but the good news is... <laughs> <laughs> She's regretting everything. The good news is... I may have made a wrong Benny's choice. trainable. <laughs> Wait, Benny's said- trainable. Yeah, there's only so much you can train, <laughs> though. All right, here, boy. Here. <laughs> oh, okay. It's so- different to train than to untame, you know? <laughs> So are you guys done for a little bit and we'll come back to you? Um, yeah, I send, we get a room, we go up there. I discreetly talk to a sea urchin and send them off. Send to, them off to a sea urchin? A sea urchin? A street urchin? A street urchin? Maybe. The sea urchin's like, <laughs> it's going to take streets. me forever to get there. <laughs> I send a little street urchin <laughs> off to summon Tommy. Eugenia, is there anything why all why all of that is going on that you want to do or Well, I mean, I probably want to tell Lord McNevin. All right, so you go to his hotel. Yes. All right, so he comes down to the lobby. I didn't think I'd see you so soon. Well, I just wanted to... I, I just felt it was... It was only... I just didn't want to make you wait for a decision. I I, I appreciate that. No, I, I truly believe... No, I know. My son is Robert's son. I'm so very sorry for your loss, and... I do hope the best for you, but... I just, I just can't. I understand. Um, it was good seeing you. It was good seeing you too. And then he walks off. Okay. The street urchin is going to go try to find Tommy. What did you tell the street urchin to do? Um, so Tommy knows, you know, like who I am or whatever. He's kind of Twitter pated or infatuated. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh no, he's Twitter pated. <laughs> so, um, I'll have, uh, I'll have Ethel or Alizé like write out a little note and then like leave like a little lipstick mark on it or something. And do you tell him to come to mm-hmm, you and here? And I'm going to tell him specifically that I want to see him. I'll make no mention of the other yeah. two ladies. Um, just that I want to see him. And that since my place has been burned to the ground, that right. he should meet me here. Okay. So some time passes. It's very alluring. Yes. So some time <laughs> passes and sure enough, Tommy shows up. And uh, he's like, uh, I didn't think I'd ever ever see you again. Um, uh, I'm sorry it took so long for me to reach out to you, Tommy. This, How have you been? I've been good. I've been I've been good. This is an interesting place. Oh, I know, right? <laughs> the rose petal was so much nicer than this place. Oh well. well what can I help you with? Well. And you notice he gets kind of close, like familiar close. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I'll just sort of. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> um, yeah, I'll just like gently, like you know, place my hand on his on his chest, like welcoming, but keeping him just right, enough right. so that he doesn't like lean Personal in and try to bubble. kiss me. But also, you know, like a nice little caress to where he's like, oh, she's touching me. It's and, great to see you too. Oh, I know. Thank you. Um, look. Remember, love, we get we get twenty percent of that. I what's kind what's of, he talking I kind about? Kind of look over at the bartender and give him like a. Yeah. <laughs> Goes, sorry, spits he, into the glass he, and starts to clean it. <laughs> it's that kind of bar. Yeah, that's why it's the squeaky flutes. Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh, 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 I'm not supposed to look at that. I might as well clean his glass. <laughs> Wow. Avert your eyes, gentlemen. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Maggie's one woman show. Ready to stand. <laughs> and then I was like, <laughs> and he was like, <laughs> as long as I get to wear the the symbols on my knees, then that's all I really care about. <laughs> okay, so. All right, sorry. Um, 
Well, Tommy, are, are you still, um, I feel like, I don't even know what's going on with you anymore. I'm, I'm glad I was able to reach you at Mabel, so you're still in her employ. Uh, yes, yes I am. Um, well, I, I, uh, I did what you asked. I, I looked around a bit. She's been acting very strange lately. Oh, really? Yes. Like right. how? What was she doing? Well, um, she has a lot of her friends from her uh, spiritual oh, yeah, club from the society. over all the time. And, and they're always speaking this weird language. It's some kind of, um, it's not Latin. I, I don't know what it is, but uh, I get very worried when they start speaking it. I once heard something awful. It was this, like, sounded like someone dying. In the house? Yes. Oh, my. Uh, That's Lord... quite concerning, Tommy. I, I mean, are, are you all right? Do you feel safe in the house? Well, for the most part, she's not there, um, except for when she, you know, on a few days a week. They. Oh, sure. But her, her at-home days, as at her own, Eugenia at home would days, say. Yes. And... She, uh... When are her at-home days? Well, she's usually there. Maybe I could pay you a visit while she's not home. Well, um... She seems to not be there when the moon is full. And, um... So it, it varies. And then she's usually never there on Tuesdays and um, Fridays. Right. The rest of the time she's there. Lord Tillis hasn't been around much lately, though. Really? He's on some kind of... Uh, is it, that seems unusual. Well, he does go on, on trips every now and again, but he hasn't been around. I haven't seen him. Has Mabel had any gentlemen visitors? No, she's only had women come over. Really? Yes. Hmm. Well, Tommy... I'd really like to pay you a visit at Mabel's estate. Well, I mean, we're here now. Oh, sure. There's a... But you only want to meet once. No, I, I'd like to meet more than once. I kind of figured you might. Well, if, if we have to wait until what day? Uh, Wednesday? Yeah, look, Tommy, I tried to get a room here before you got here, but the last one was just snatched up so it doesn't look like we're going to be able to go upstairs but Wednesday this Wednesday you said yes uh, yes we can we can do that 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 sounds what good. is that two days from today yes all right well look why don't you leave the servants quarters door open for me mm -hmm. and I'll pay you a visit at three o'clock <coughs> okay <laughs> <laughs> that seems completely reasonable. Perfect. Yes. All right, let me walk you to the door. Oh, okay. And I'll walk him to the door and I'll give him a big, stupid kiss right on his face before he leaves. Thank you. <laughs> I look really forward to seeing you. Oh, I, I do too. And he leaves. Oh, Tommy. Yes? Could you please keep this little visit of ours a secret? Oh, of, of, of course. I... I I wouldn't... Forbidden fruit is sweeter, you know. <gasps> yes, of course. All right. And then the door shuts. Goodbye, and he's got this, me. like, bewildered look on his face. <laughs> like, he knows something's wrong, but he's not sure what it is. He doesn't care. Yeah, he doesn't care. <laughs> All right. I'm sure she'll love me tomorrow. <laughs> no. You still love me, too. <laughs> <laughs> so, are they in the room? Yes. Okay, God, I hope room, so. Right? Because we wouldn't want him to, like, see either of you, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I'll just go upstairs to... Uh, yeah, I'll just go upstairs to me. Okay. So, you guys do all this. You set this all up. At some point, are you going to... Then what's the next uh, part of your plan? And when are you going to let Eugenia know what's going on? Yeah, we're sending just... a message to let her know okay. where we're at. All right, so you send another mm -hmm. C slash street urgent over? <laughs> yep. Okay. It just slurps right on it over. Just, yep. Yeah. Took me 10 days to get here. <laughs> Godfrey comes up. Uh, Ma'am. Yes, Godfrey. We seem to be having more and more children around the house. Um, 
There's one downstairs now that would like to speak with you. Well, well, of course. I'll, I'll be down presently. Okay. Um, should we be expecting more children? How should I know? Just want to be prepared, Mum. Give him a bit of chocolate. I'll sure. be down in a moment. I don't know if we have any. He's getting mumbles as he walks away. <laughs> so... Tell me exactly what you told the street urchin to say. I'll just say, the ladies are safe. We'll contact you shortly with newly learned information. All right. So you come down the stairs, Eugenia, and standing next to the door is a very dirty child, mm -hmm. probably maybe 11. Hello, mother. Hello. Um, what is your name? Charles. Hello, Charles. Uh, what did you come about? I was told to bring a message from the ladies. Oh, all right. What is it? They said they found the safe and they'll get in touch with you soon. Right. <laughs> um... This is probably the third kid that got this message, too, you're thinking, probably. <laughs> yeah, it's... The door opens right when he says that, and it's Robert Jr. Mother. <gasps> and he looks down at the child, and he's all like, get out of here. What? What is this? Go, right now. And the boy's Robert, all like, it is ah. none of your business. And the boy zips out the front door, slams the door. We have to talk about your friends and what they're doing to this family. The last time I checked... This was my home. Not if we keep helping these women out. We need them out of this house so that we can save money. Did I raise you with no humanity? Mother, Did I raise a son who was so callous as to the needs of others? Especially his poor mother. <laughs> Who put her heart and soul into raising him to be a decent man? Oh, where's the general? I need to stop. I need to talk to the general. Godfrey! Godfrey! Yeah, yes, ma'am. Where's the general? Uh, he's upstairs. Do you want me to go get him? No, I shall come up to him. I will speak with you later. Mother, you can't keep a boy. <laughs> 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 so you get up to the top of the stairs and you go into the general's room where he's in his den where he's reading and smoking a pipe. And I close the door and I shut off the tears immediately and say, your son is insufferable. <laughs> <laughs> he's downstairs trying to tell his mother what to do. <laughs> and he like stands up and starts going for the door. Oh, there's no need. There's no talking to him. He's just... I, I thought we raised him better. <laughs> yes, I think it was that first nanny that he had. She might have had an influence. That's why we had her sacked. <laughs> yes. Thank you. You always know how to calm me down. <laughs> All right. Before Wednesday, or before the night that you were going to go over... I think we have one, like, full day. Yeah, you have a few full like days. Say it's yeah, Monday. yeah, so whatever. We have Tuesday, and then Wednesday at 3 is when we're going over to Mabel's. So do we want to take this, do we want to take Tuesday to go see if we can make contact with Alizé's alchemist uh, family friend? Yes. Okay. What's the alchemist family friend's name? Johnson. Okay, so Johnson, you're going to go talk with him. Mm-hmm. Okay. Alizé, it's, it's been a long time. Yes, it has been quite How a while. How are you? Doing all right, and you? I'm doing fine. I'm doing fine. The shop's going well. Excellent. What, what can I do for you uh, ladies today? There's something extra special I think only you might be able to help us with. Well, that's what we're here for. Yes. So, I don't know if you've noticed anything strange in the city lately, more so than usual. Uh, nope. Not really. I mean, is Trees there... of unusual size, rodents of unusual size. 
Uh, no. I don't believe those exist, do they? <laughs> as far as I know, they do. Oh. Well, that's, uh, that's disconcerting. Yes, it has been quite disconcerting. Well, how can I help? Well, we need, um, a potion of some sort that will, um, incapacitate some people. It's for their own safety. This sounds terrible, the way I'm putting it. It really does. <laughs> I'm sorry, how rude of me. I didn't introduce you to my friends. Yes. You come along, yes. Yes. You yes. are... This is Miss Maggie Cooper. Hello. Nice to meet you. And this is Miss Ethel Pendergrast. It is nice to meet you. Oh, an American. Okay. Yes, so, I have friends from all over the world. Yes. Um, you need a potion. And the other world. <laughs> <laughs> Can you do a persuasion roll for sure, me? Sure, sure. Because I realize now in talking with you that this sounds crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but I like it. Mm -hmm. um, what is that against? Persuasion. Persuasion. That's not very high, and I'm all very high. Congratulations to me. Do you want to me. push the roll? Yes, please. Okay, so if you push the roll, he's going to, like, you're going to, like, make him really nervous if you fail, and he might report it that... Okay, then maybe I don't push because okay. I don't have very high persuasion at all. Would you like yeah. me to have a... That would be helpful yeah, because I, I know you... Charm have... and I know you've got... My persuasion yeah. is great. Okay, so you're going to try to persuade him? Yes. Well, talk it out, like... Uh, I'm sorry, uh, it appears that uh, dear Alizé is having trouble explaining what we're looking for. We are looking for an ether of some sort that might... Uh, incapacitate some people you understand there's some interest in spiritualist type parties lately is this a sex party it is certainly not sir <laughs> unless you're looking for an invite i'm just kidding <laughs> I was i'm totally kidding i would never i'm sorry uh give me your persuasion roll oh i am going to push though I, right. I've been to the other worlds. I don't. I, I, there's so much I can tell you. <laughs> How right. Zay becomes unhinged. <laughs> I'm gonna say everything. Yes. Eighty-eight or seventy-eight. Come on. Come on. Ooh. Twenty. So you promise it's not anything carnal? Because I had a. I had people come in with a, a prostitute once, and. Why are you looking at me? I'm just joking. I know why you're looking at sir, me. <laughs> sir, I assure you it is not anything of that nature. It sometimes helps to relax a person so they can commune with the spirit world more easily. Well, Alice has been our, our friend for a long time, so I will help you. But uh, please be careful. It, it can be dangerous in, in high volumes. You can, you can hurt someone, so... Oh, understood. So he gets it ready for you and, and gives you this. Uh, he says, now this is a powder. You have to add water for it to uh, activate, okay? Is there understood. any safeguards for anyone else in the room when administering? Um, sometimes a, they have these new surgical masks that they have that you can put on. Um, I unfortunately don't have any, but a, uh, a wet cloth over your, something to, to, you know, keep you from breathing it in. For protection? Yeah, that would, that would work. Great. Thank you so much, Johnson. No problem. Have a good day. You as well. Thank you. We appreciate it. Okay. So you guys head out. This has been a very bizarre episode. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> yeah, we got to set everything up. Set, one's gonna yeah. be great, so. <laughs> okay, so this is actually a really good place to stop this particular episode before we start up the next one. So thank you guys so much. This was a lot of fun. And the ASMR episode was a hit. Yeah, it was. <laughs> I got so there are so many outtakes from this that are going to happen. It's it's just fun. They're all going on Patreon, right? Yeah, they're all on Patreon. <laughs> These are metal dice. Speaking of Patreon, <laughs> <laughs> yes, I just wanted to get in. Yes, on this. Wes. <laughs> 
the Maraca convention was just <laughs> off the chain. So speaking of Patreon, we've got, as I said, at the head of the show, we've got a ton of things that are coming out. We do a weekly um, podcast about just prepping for games and, and different things like that. We have our cast doing readings of different authors that are coming out soon. So check us out on Patreon so that we can bring you more stuff. Now let's talk about social media and start with Terry. Oh, hello out there in the internet. This is Terry Gamble. You can find me at the Terry Gamble on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, or through terrygamble.com and at Horror Movie Survival Guide, uh, a weekly podcast about scary movies. Check it out. You might like it. You can follow us on all the internets too. Okay, bye. Yay. Um, hello, everyone. Kelsey Osborne. And you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Kelsey Kelsum, K-E-L-S-E-Y-K-E-L-S-E-M. M-O-U-S-E-M. Right. <laughs> like a song. <laughs> like a little song. <laughs> hey, I am Mac Beauvais. You can follow me on the interwebs as at Strange Like That. You can also find me very frequently over at Happy Jack's RPG Podcast, where I play games and run games and just games. Games. Yeah. Game on? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I'm Michelle Otis, and you can find me on the socials on Twitter and the Insta as at Michulu, M-I-C-H-U-L-H-U. Real quick, you can also find 12-Sided Stories now on Instagram. We have our own Instagram. We also have our own website at 12sidestories.com. And we are on Twitter at 12sidedstories.com. So come follow to learn more stuff about us. Also, I am Wes Otis. I am at Plate Mail Games. I sell a lot of audio that you hear on the actual episodes on Drive Through RPG and Battle Bards. You can find my stuff there. And thank you so much for listening. We will be back shortly. Bye. <laughs>